Yo, 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 Math by the Moon back with uh, another video. We're going to look at a radical parent functions cube root function this time. Uh, we're going to transform the cube root parent function. Uh, so, you ready? Boom. Here we go. The cube root parent function looks like this. And we already did this cube root parent function uh, in a previous video. Uh, we said that the cube root can plug in any number you'd like, uh, positives or negatives, so the domain's all real numbers. Um, you can plug it, you get, get out any real number as well, so your domain and range are both all real numbers, and it goes left and right forever, and it goes up and down forever. So that means that left and right is the domain values. Uh, they cover the domain values, so it could be all real numbers for the domain. And since it's going up and down forever, I know it's slow, but... Um, eventually the end it's gonna be all real numbers for your range as well so now we want to talk about shifts um, and just the regular uh, zero zero point is a good place to start we, we know that we plug in zero we get the cube root of zero which is zero right so look at this example down here right we wouldn't be able to plug in zero because then we'd have to do the cube root of two so there's something else that's gonna happen. So let's take a look at a few uh, of the inside shifts. And I'm talking about this inside the square root or the cube root, like we did with the square root. Now we're looking at cube root. So in here, let me just grab the parent function graph and stick it over here. Um, normally, normally in the cube root, we plug in zero, we can get zero. Here, we wanna actually, just like we did with square root, instead of minus three, we wanna be three above the cube, right? We wanna be three above each and every one of these cubes. So instead of zero, we'd actually plug in three. So if we look at the blue one, we'd start out here at three, and three would give us zero, right? So there's no, there's no outside number, there's no k value, that's gonna raise up or lower the y value. It's just gonna be the exact same uh, parent function y values, but the x's are gonna be shifted. So the blue one, we'd plug in three. Um, again, we always wanna be three above this, so we'd actually plug in, uh, we'd actually plug in four, right? Four minus three. So this would be four comma one. So if I come out here at four comma one, right there it is, right? Four comma one. Uh, if I want to do 8, I'd actually have to be at 11, 11 comma 2, and I might be able to sneak this one in here and be it right about there, yeah. So then we go to this one, which is x plus 3 underneath the cube root. That means we want to be 3 below every cube, right? And I'll just do it with the negatives this time. So I want to be 3 below negative 1. 3 below negative 1 would be negative 4. So negative 4 would give me negative one, right? I guess if I wanted to be three below this, I'd be at negative three comma zero, which is exactly right here, right? Um, if I wanted to be three below this, I'd be at negative two comma one, right? And you can see how these points, these points right here, these three points are all just slid over three to the left, right? Um, if this was, let me go back to my pink parent graph. These are the three in the middle of that one, right? If I took this point and slid it over three, if I took this point and slid it over three, if I took that point and slid it over three, I'd be right where these other, this transformation needs to be. So from the parent graph, I can slide the green one three to the left. And from the parent graph, I can slide the blue one three to the right. All right, three to the right. So that's if the number's underneath the radical with the cube root affecting the x values we plug in. If the number's on the outside, what we're gonna see is, let's just plot some of the parent points here, right? Our zero, zero for the blue one, for the blue one is gonna shift it as no change on the x, so we don't have to move it left or right at all because there's nothing underneath the radical, but we just have to move the y value up to. So this one just goes up two. This one right here goes up two. You can see how I'm just moving, boom, boom, up two. This one right here goes up two, boom, boom. Now these ordered pair right here, if we looked at the table, right, if we looked at the table, 
the X's would all be the exact same X's as our parent, right? Our X's are all the same, negative zero, zero can go in here. And instead of getting out a zero, we get out two. This would be zero, two, that's where that is. A one, if I plug in a one, we'd actually get three, one comma three, right? And if I plug in a negative one, I would actually get a, neg a positive one because negative one plus two, right? Because it's the cube root of negative one is negative one, right? And then I have to add two, I'd be at positive one, which is right there. So this table gets shifted just like the square root one got shifted with the H and the K. Whatever's under the radical, we wanna be shifting that left or right accordingly. Whatever's outside, is a direct raise or lower. Whatever it is actually saying here adds up to the Y or takes off of the Y. So the green one, the green one then, here, let's slide that right there. Zero minus two means we're gonna drop two. We're gonna drop two right down here from that point. We're gonna drop two from that point. We're going to drop two from that point. And so there's our transformation of our graphs. And we could even do the, the negative eight two and the eight two as well. But I just looking at those three points. So let's go back to the examples and let's really figure out these tables. All right. So if I take the first one here, this would be our normal set of values we plug in. These are our cubes. Well, I can't plug those cubes in this time because I have to add two. So what that means is I have to be two below the cube every time. So instead of being at negative eight, I'd have to be at negative 10. Right, because negative 10 plus two is negative eight and the cube root of negative eight is negative two. So again, instead of being two above, I really want to be two below the cube. So I want to be at negative three because that's two below negative one, negative three, right? And notice how there's nothing outside here, right? There's nothing outside the cube root. So the outputs are going to remain the same. There's no adjustment on the Y value. So it's, it's just whatever we're adjusting is only on the cubes the side of the cubes that we're adjusting. So instead of being able to plug in zero here, I wanna be two below zero, so that would be a negative two, right? And I wanna be two below that, so that would be a negative one. And two below that, so that would be a six. So these points right here, negative 10, two, negative three, one, and so on, are the actual points for this graph that we're gonna look at. So let me pull that up on the, on the graph here. And that one is now this one. And you can see that since, since I was adding two to the, the perfect cube, I actually had to be two below or two to the left of the X value. So every one of these points that's on the parent graph is two adjusted. Right, and I'm just looking at zero, zero. And negative one, negative one is just two slid over. So it's negative three, negative one. And one, one is negative one, positive one. And I can keep going and, and find every nice clean point on all of my perfect cubes on the parent graph and just slide it to, to the left. I know it says plus two, you think go right, it's actually left because of that impact on what, what number you need to plug in here to actually get the cube you're trying to do the cube root of. So then the next one in our table is the cube root of X, which means that I don't have to change these at all. I can plug the perfect cubes in right here, but the outputs are now going to change, right? Because I'm going to be raising them up by two, right? The cube root of negative eight was negative two, but I need to raise that up by two. So instead of putting negative two here, negative two plus two would be zero. The cube root of negative one is negative one. Negative one plus two is one. The cube root of zero is zero, zero plus two is two. So these are the points I'm gonna plot, negative eight, zero, negative one, one, zero, two. I don't have to slide it left or right at all. There's no horizontal shift. There's just a raise of two on every single one of our parent points. So these values just go up by two. So this will be a three. 
and this would be a four. So if I go look at this graph, I should see from the parent graph, turn off that one, I should just simply see it go up by two points at every one of those critical uh, perfect cube values that we plugged in, right? It didn't, it didn't change the left or right at all. Now, this last one is gonna change the left and right and the up and down. And if you're playing along, you probably got it figured out. This is gonna actually move it three spaces to the left. And this is gonna move that five spaces down. So let's just take a look at the graph. That's what it would be. Three spaces to the left, one, two, three and five spaces down. And all I'm doing is I'm starting at zero, zero, and I'm moving it, right? So let's go back to our table. Let's get these values, right? So instead of negative eight, I'd want to be three below that. I'd want to be at negative 11. And instead of negative two, I'd want to be five below that. I'd want to be at negative seven. Instead of negative one, I'd want to be three below that. So I'd be at negative four. And I'd want to be five below this, our normal expected output, so negative six. I want to be three below this. And I want to be five below that, five below zero three below one and five below one here. Five below one is negative four. Three below this is five and th five below that is negative three. So if I go look at these points right here, Let's do negative three, negative five. That was the first one we found, right? Negative three, negative five. Um, the next one we have is negative four, negative six, right? Negative four, negative six. Let's see if that's in there. Yeah, now let's find negative 11, negative seven. Negative 11, negative seven, bingo. And every one of these nice points that were on our uh, parent graph is gonna be three to the left, five down. So here's a nice point. One, two, three, and five down. One, two, three, four, five, bingo. That's five comma negative three. All right, let's see if that's on our table. Five, negative three. Yes, it is right there. It is. So either by looking at the graph itself, sketching your parent graph or by doing it in the table um, or sort of a combination of those two things together really are going to be key. Now, domain and range of these graphs. So the domain and range for the parent function is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity for the domain, negative infinity to infinity for the range, because it's going up and down forever, that's your range, and it's going left and right forever, that's your domain. So none of these graphs are gonna change in terms of their domain and range. Every single domain and range for a cube root graph is negative infinity to infinity for both the domain and the range. There, there isn't, a value you can't plug in, and there's not a value you can't get out. So um, all real numbers. If you need any more information on transformations for just the H and the K, we're gonna get into the dilations and the, or the, the stretches and the compressions and the dilations with the A value in the front of, um, of the square root and the cube root. You've seen the A maybe, um, it's just the, the, the coefficient in front of the radical. So we're going to get into that next. But if, if you need any more help on just the left or right and the up and down shifting, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. Later.